Hey, I'm back again. I Maybe I'll get it right this time. Maybe I finally got the thing set up to do full 1080p. So uh, I thought I'd make a, a little part two of the one I made just, you know, earlier today of some of these little records that some records that I found just recently as a preview to make it all my uh, vinyl collector LP videos. Uh, and I'm not going to make a whole series consecutive, but I'll make them off and on as I collect different records of a different topic or genre, whatever. But uh, let's see if this thing's going to work, this, this webcam. It shows, I wanted to show detail when I show you uh, album covers and stuff. So so here we go. Uh, I don't know if you can hear it in the background. I'm playing a, a soundtrack to a biker movie called The Wild Angels. Um, this is pre-Easy Rider. Peter Fonda and Nancy Sinatra. Um, this record, ironically, I found recently, but uh, my dad in 1967 uh, bought this album. It's the only record I recall him ever buying that could be called, you know, rock or guitar, electric guitar. This is the one that, that he bought. And uh, this is mono. And it sounds great then, and it still sounds great now. The one I showed you just, the first one was a, uh, you can see that, dual phonics, which is kind of a, a reprocessed of, of the sound to, to imitate uh, stereo. But ironically, I found is uh, when I played these, compared these records, the sound quality, the mono sounds better because when they, I believe when they, would try to make this uh, reprocessing. It would kind of cut off some of the some of the frequency range in order to move it to like another channel to imitate the stereo. And that's why a lot of people do, who'd like to collect old uh, records, especially of the rock era, they like the the mono to prefer the mono to the stereo. They to them it sounds better. Um, what else? What else can I show you here? These are a couple more that I that I wanted to show you. I that I found the same day that I showed you those other ones. Uh, this one, "Sing Along with Connie Francis," Brill Cream presents. She was from that era of the Pat Boone, the the early '60s era of the squeaky clean teen music. It's these little animated characters here. I've seen TV commercials of these these little characters. You might have seen them on maybe even on YouTube. But uh, I picked this one up that day. This is another one. This now this one is worth some money, and I, I found it in that book that I showed you uh, in the last video. This is Ricky Nelson, Rick Nelson. This is his first album. Um. This is in pretty good condition, the disc and the, and the jacket. I, 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 I've ordered these uh, plastic sleeves and I have paper sleeves that I've ordered it from a mail order place uh, just to protect them. Um, this, in the condition this is in, it's probably worth $40, $50 according to that book I showed you. Um, if this was in near mint condition, this would be worth to a collector $100. And I got this at Goodwill for one dollar, so it made out pretty good. So I still got to clean it up and see how it sounds. So uh, what else can I show you? Well, this one I've gotten a little while back, but I'm a big fan of this band. I think one of my favorite American uh, rock groups of the '60s, Jefferson Airplane. So after bathing at Baxter's, it was kind of a real concept type album. It wasn't really like a commercial type album, but uh, it has the uh, original logo of that time, so you know it was an original copy. And I'll show you the disc. It has the original sleeve, the original uh, picture sleeve, so it shows you what uh, what else was out at the time, and a lot of this was the kind of the middle of the road. Because RCA was not really a, a hip label. I mean, they had Elvis. Elvis was their big money maker with, you know, the younger people back then, the younger generation back then. But uh, they had like the 
you know, stuff like Victory at Sea, Peter Nero, Harry Mancini, you know, stuff that your that kids' parents were into, you know. But just to show you, this is what RCA would think of these hippie groups like Jefferson Airplane. You got the Nipper the Dog classic label, and you can see kind of like, you see the title, but then you see, look how tiny Jefferson Airplane is, how tiny the name of the band is. You can barely see it. It's like they were they were ashamed of these these hippies on being on their, you know, RCA, which was like, you know, this very staid record company. So I thought that was interesting, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, I'm going to make, you know, I got a pretty big collection. I It pretty much takes a whole wall of one of the bedrooms of my apartment and just moving my collection was you know it did something you know it really was backbreaking to move all these things by myself but i did it and i i hope i'm going to stay here for quite a while so but i hope you enjoyed this video and uh i hope to see you again here uh, real soon bye